The truth is, in politics, the sideshows are much more interesting. They get much more attention. And as expected, this is exactly what happened when William Samuel Ruto yeah, hosted the UDA National Delegates Conference. Ask anybody about the event and the first thing they'll tell you is about Millicent Omanga's dance. Yeah, bottoms up, economic policy, dance. <laughs> Ali dance, Aka dance, wah. Na hiyo mwili yake kubwa ambayo amebarikiwa naye. <laughs> They'll also tell you about the clip where the deputy president was very upset with Dennis Itumbi and was telling off Dennis Itumbi yeah, for something he did or did not do. There was no sound so we couldn't hear what he was saying. Those who took in the event right up to the end may tell you about how Moses Kuria made a confession to Libya Uru Kinyata Kura. Sisi ndo tulimfanya president, tulimuibia kura. Ay 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 ay. There was no shortage of drama. Bottom line, there was no shortage of drama. Drama ilikuwa nyingi. Popcorn ile litajika ni nyingi. <laughs> but on my show today I take a different approach because by now you must be sick with all the different analysis that have come out concerning the UDA function. Yeah, so I'll not bore you with more of the same. Instead what I've done is to go very deep. So deep that I don't know if I'll be able to carry all of you with me to the bottom depths of understanding exactly what went down. And at the end of this video today, I make some very bold predictions. Very crazy predictions. The kind of predictions somebody hears and says, no, Chris, you can't be right. This can't happen. No, Chris, no, 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 apana. Those kind of predictions. So stick with me till the end. And for those who come here regularly without fail, for a lesson to use in this life, what I can tell you, today you will not be disappointed. Utashiba kushiba. <laughs> Karibu sana, folks. Thank you so much for making the time. And just make sure you enjoy yourself. But first, please allow me very little time to tell you about the most amazing content I have ever had the privilege of putting together in my entire lifetime. Out of all the political books I've ever written, and there are quite a number, Dark Secrets of the Kenyan Presidency stands out as an amazing bestseller. Yeah. And also many consider it a classic because it takes a look at the office of the Presidency of the Republic of Kenya like nobody else has ever done before or even to date. And many of those who have taken in this amazing ebook say that they just couldn't stop reading through. Yeah. They just couldn't put it down. Maybe that has a lot to do with some of the mind-boggling information 
contained in this book. Did you know, for example, that Jomo Kenyatta once confessed in public that he would never, ever touch alcohol again? <laughs> many people don't know that and they don't even know the circumstances. But many of us know that the first president of Kenya during his presidency enjoyed the occasional stiff drink yeah, when his health allowed. Despite the earlier firm promise he had made in public early in his life. And don't even mention the scene painted very clearly in the book where a small boy shivering because it was raining cats and dogs and carrying a two-year-old baby on his back arrived at the home of his grandfather who made some predictions that dominated his life frustrated him for the rest of his life yeah, until that prediction came true. Or maybe it is because of the picture painted of Daniel Arap Moy, especially during his first cabinet meeting where it was difficult for him even to look up and even the other cabinet ministers, some of them who had been harassing him for years, could not look at him straight in the eye. Yeah, there was so much tension at that cabinet meeting captured perfectly, accurately, in dark secrets. It is totally amazing. And there's much more, right up to the Kibaki presidency. Now I have some amazing news for you. Yeah, this book is available in video format. Yeah, that is, you don't even have to read it. Many people hate to read. They don't have the time to read. You can take it in as a video. You can take it in as an audiobook. Yeah. Listen to it right through. And I have an amazing offer for you today. Not only will I send you the ebook in PDF format, yeah, you can even print it out as a book and read it. Yeah. I will also send it to you in video format. Yeah, so that you can listen to it right through or watch it right through. Amazing, isn't it? But there's more. If you take advantage of this very latest offer of mine, I will give you six months membership free to my weekly intelligence briefings. That means if you already have six months, I will add you another six months on top of what you have so that you have a whole year to enjoy my weekly intelligence briefings. And by the way, I have quite a number of briefings, Jikoni, that I'm preparing, which I'll release in quick succession within the next few days. And those are weekly intelligence briefings you don't want to miss. So don't waste any time. For slightly above $10, very little money, you can't even go into most restaurants with that kind of money, you'll be able to receive both the PDF format of Dark Secrets of the Kenyan Presidency and the video version. Yeah, so don't waste any time. You can see the details on your screens right now. Just send a blank email to that email address you see and you'll receive full payment instructions on what to do. The same payment instructions are repeated in the description area below this video on YouTube. Go for it. This offer is only for a very limited time. Yeah, so take full advantage of it. And of course, in taking up this offer, you'll also be supporting the work I do on this channel. And if you believe this work is important, yeah, then you will be doing something very important in getting hold of dark secrets of the Kenyan presidency. Go for it right away. Asanteni sana for your time. This is your humble servant, Chris Kumekucha.
in my opinion the uda national delegates conference was very impressive yeah, very colorful exactly what a political outfits national delegates conference should look like very well organized and i'm not talking politically i'll come to the politics okay but right now i want us to focus on the optics because those are also important in politics we even had the nominated senator Millicent Omanga stealing the show yeah she gave us a very good demonstration very graphic demonstration of what the bottoms up economic policy of the deputy president can look like yeah with a good bottoms up dance what you dancing everybody's talking about it <laughs> up to there very good excellent above expectations yeah but then after that what was supposed to happen next was political to send the political message to the people it was also a good opportunity for the deputy president to start looking presidential you know this is very important for presidential candidate anywhere in the world people have to imagine you as the president yeah before they can vote for you and this is pure human nature because in case you didn't know a woman has to imagine you as a husband yeah before she can even start to fall in love with you if she can't imagine that you'll always remain a good friend <laughs> my very good close friend nothing more it is just the reality of life tulipata na tutaiwacha hivyo hivyo yeah and it is the same in politics so you must look presidential as soon as possible if you want to be a president anywhere in the world and today i will not dare pass a verdict over that important issue i'll only give you the facts point them out to you and then you make your own conclusion please you see that is why politics is such a difficult career yeah because it is not enough to put on a good show yeah to put on a well organized very well organized colorful interesting vibrant occasion that's not enough all that already is very hard work it takes a lot of financing it takes a lot out of you organizing all that up to that point but it is still not enough you have to make sure that you're very precise with your politics others all the other hard work you've put in goes to waste or is not fully utilized yeah to your advantage in my opinion the deputy president should have toned down for this uda national delegates conference he should have toned down to look more presidential he should have toned down his usual aggressive style of speaking always attacking somebody even when he doesn't mention anybody you see that the man is just aggressive <laughs> the kind of aggression you expect from a youth wing of the party a youth wing of uda or somebody who's new to politics but on the presidential level you have to be different yeah a difference between dindi nyoro and william ruto yeah and i'm saying this with all due respect to the deputy president and honorable dindi nyoro yeah i'm sure you get what i'm trying to say in a nutshell it is not what the deputy president said that's my opinion it is not what the deputy president said at the ndc it is how he said it yeah for instance i would have said in my government now i'm deputy president william samoe ruto in my government state capture will be a thing of the past 
our key institutions will never be captured by my government. So that my brother Raila Odinga and my brother Uhuru Kenyatta will strongly disagree with me, fight me politically, but they will never be visited by the KRA or the DCI soon after that. That will never happen. Something like that. You see the big problem the deputy president has in his presidential campaign is that every time he opens his mouth, even if he doesn't say something against Raila Odinga and Uru Kenyatta, it looks like he is. Even if he doesn't mention their names. Even if he starts, for instance, talking about, oh, you know, yesterday I had a fight with my dear wife. It will look like he's attacking Raila and Uru. True story. It's just the way he says things. The perception the public already have of him. And of course the public includes people who have voters cards and who will need to make a decision on August 9th. And therefore one has to be extremely careful and think through exactly what they're doing. Leaving emotions very far from what they're doing. And then the biggest blunder of all. As you're telling people that your government will allow people freedom, will allow institutions to be free, you lock out the journalists from some of your deliberations. You lock out the press, the media. <laughs> now, that is not even a blunder. That is a disaster. It is like somebody at their wedding giving a speech with their beautiful bride next to them and saying, I'm going to treasure this woman. I'm going to look after her. And then as he's speaking, somebody comes to talk to his beautiful bride and they start talking and giggling there as he's trying to make his speech. And the man turns to his wife and says, Shut up! Don't you see I'm talking here? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Will you believe a single word he has just said? People believe what they see you doing and they never remember what you actually said. But what they saw you doing, they will never forget. Especially if it looked like it contradicted what you said. What you did contradicted what you said. You know many people come to this channel regularly, again and again, to get life lessons. Yeah. So here's one from this. It tells us that running for president is not easy. It is not for every Tom, Dick, Kamau and Omondi. Clearly, the level of this office, head of state, is so high up there that it is impossible to hide the character of a man. It is impossible to hide it. Sooner or later, it will seep through for all to see. That's a problem. And that's why it's not for everybody. Because there are some of us who can't control our emotions. There are some of us who are just like that. And we can't change. Yeah. Those of us who are like that should never attempt to run for the presidency. We'll be wasting our resources and our time. Because for sure, we will be caught red-handed. You know, I can already hear some people saying, supporters of UDA, leave the deputy president alone. He will win this his own way, his own style. His own unique approach to things will win him the presidential elections. Now, First of all, the deputy president cannot be left alone. He's running for public office. He has asked us not to leave him alone, but to come out and vote for him. How can you possibly ask anybody to leave him alone? Isn't it a better strategy for you to convince, even Chris, to vote for the deputy president? Rather than having the defeatist attitude, leave him alone. Then secondly, and even more important, a lot of us, not only UDA supporters, a lot of us believe in reinventing 
this earth in which we live in. Doing things our own way and completely ignoring the way our country and indeed our planet has been set up. Is that possible? Of course not. And I believe this is what many of my colleagues mean when they keep on telling me, Chris, Shida wa Kenya ni kwamba wa mesoma mpaka wa kwa jinga wa mwisho. I think that's what they mean. I feel them yeah, when they say that. Because even on this channel, I've often been told, Chris, just analyze the politics. When you start these spiritual manenos, you lose me. Leave out the spiritual manenos, just analyze politics. You're good at analyzing politics, just analyze that for us. His spiritual maneno, peleka kwa kanisa. Well, I have news for you. It is impossible for me to analyze anything. And especially politics. While ignoring spiritual laws. It won't work. And it can't work. And it can never work. Indeed, I would never be able to produce video that can stand the test of time. Because I'm grateful to Almighty God. I have many, many videos, the vast majority of this channel, which have stood the test of time. And that's why many of you are eager to come to this channel. You may not like me as an individual, but you're eager because of my track record. Anyway, please allow me to clarify something very important. And this is something which goes beyond politics. It is so important for anybody living on this earth to understand this very important point I'm about to illustrate and make it clear. And I'm going to tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. Like me, hate me, but I will tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. Maybe one day you can thank me. But even if you don't, I will be fulfilling my mandate. Because somebody sent me here. And they sent me here for a purpose. To fulfill a certain purpose. And in telling you this truth. It is part of fulfilling my purpose. My dear brother. My dear sister. From today. You need to know. That if you ignore something. It does not mean it does not exist. And even more important. It does not mean that it cannot affect you. I've talked about witchcraft on this channel. People have said, what? In the 21st century you're talking about witchcraft? Rubbish. Others have said, witchcraft cannot affect anybody who ignores it. Not true. And I'm about to demonstrate why it is not true. In the same way people have said, spiritual laws are rubbish. They don't affect me. I can do my things and succeed and completely ignore spiritual laws whatever they are whatever that is now i'm going to keep this very simple yeah, with a lot of illustrations so that i don't lose anybody if you want to understand completely what spiritual laws are and what witchcraft is you need to plant something on the ground yeah, just a plant it doesn't matter what it is even a flower and then you observe what happens and you'll completely understand spiritual laws. Because that is exactly, precisely how spiritual laws work. Against you or for you. And this is how the same spiritual laws work. Against politics and politicians and certain political tactics. Bottom line, you can avoid spiritual laws the way you can avoid gravity. Go to the top floor of a building. You're very educated, you know everything, and you say gravity will not affect me, and you jump. And even as you fall to your death, you can keep on insisting, these things don't affect me. Until the last minute, it won't change a thing. Back to my illustration. Assuming you used a good seed, a perfect seed, your plant will shoot out of the ground. And also assuming that you plant it in the perfect conditions. That means water, nutrients in the soil, etc., etc. After a short while, your plant will shoot out of the ground. 
It will not happen instantly. It will not happen immediately. That's another spiritual law. It will take a certain period of time. Maybe three days, four days. And then, after it shoots out of the ground, very interesting things start happening. Weeds come from nowhere. They start choking your plant. Birds come and start eating the leaves. Caterpillars start feeding on the leaves like there's no tomorrow. And so many other negative things designed to stop that plant from going anywhere start coming out of the woodwork. And if you ignore all those issues, tell yourself they don't exist, they don't matter, sooner or later that plant will die. Now hold on to that thought for a minute and let's quickly go to the Bible. I know some people believe it's a fairy tale. Yeah, but just hear me out. If you do, you'll get a major revelation that will help you in your life. The Bible tells us that there was a major war in heaven and some inhabitants of heaven were thrown out. We call them the fallen angels. And they fell on earth and they interacted with human beings. Indeed, we are told by the Bible that they married human wives and they gave birth to giants. It's all there in the Bible. Now, there's a book which was omitted, taken out of the Bible, called the Book of Enoch. In the Book of Enoch, we are told that these fallen angels, when they married human wives, the first thing they taught them, wait for this one, was witchcraft. So how did these beings learn witchcraft? Did they learn it in heaven? No. But they had knowledge, very deep knowledge, of spiritual laws that controlled the earth. And so all they did was to use that knowledge for evil, for evil purposes. Because a law applies to everybody. That is why it's called a law. It applies to everybody and everything. For example, in those days, to worship God, you had to offer sacrifice, slaughter an animal, shed the blood, etc., etc., and worship God. So these beings twisted it. They did the same, followed exactly the same spiritual laws, but not to worship God, to worship somebody else. Bottom line, that is precisely what witchcraft is, using spiritual laws for evil, using spiritual laws to defy your maker, almighty God. That is precisely what witchcraft is. Now in these spiritual laws, there's also hierarchy. Yeah, you can't have two people at the same level. In one home or in one family, for instance. A home will fall apart if there's no clear head of the home. Imagine a situation where the man, the husband, is the head of the home. But then the woman is also the head of the home, maybe even more powerful than the man. That home will not stand. A kingdom divided against itself will not stand. There needs to be an authority. A person whose word is final. No arguments. Let me give you a quick example. Somebody uses spiritual laws against you, plays witchcraft on you. And so you go to see a witch doctor. And the witch doctor appears to solve the problem. Yeah, whatever was done against you is reversed. And you're very happy. And you believe that whatever was eating you has gone forever. Actually, it has gone nowhere. What has happened is that a spiritual law has been used to solve the problem. Yeah. A demon, a spirit with more authority than the one which was initially sent to give you trouble enters your body and it tells the other smaller one the one with smaller authority shut up shh i'm here i'm now in charge and your problem seemingly goes away but in actual fact what has happened is that instead of having one evil spirit inside you you now have two one with higher authority than another one you cannot change these spiritual laws there is no way you can wake up one morning after you've gotten your 10th PhD and say this is rubbish and it stands. No. Now let's apply this to politics. And politics is everywhere. 
even in a church, even in a mosque. And so you go to this church and you find the man of God there carries a lot of authority. He doesn't have any money. He doesn't have property. He's not rich. But he carries a lot of authority. His word is final. People wait for his decision in everything. People even consult him or her for their own decisions. And then in sharp contrast, you go to another church where the pastor has no authority. People are doing what they want. And you wonder what's wrong. If you investigate further, you will find out that spiritually, the pastor who carries authority is fully submitted under the authority of his maker, Almighty God. And the pastor who is having so many problems does not carry authority. If you investigate, you will find that they are not fully submitted under the authority. To get authority, you need to respect authority. That's a spiritual law, very important. In the Bible, a prophet called Elisha was fully submitted under the authority of Elijah, who was fully submitted under the authority of Almighty God. And the authority that Elisha carried after Elijah left this earth, it is believed he did not die, he just left. The authority Elisha carried was so great that he was able to perform double the miracles that Elijah performed, including one last one when he was already dead, long dead. A body touched his bones and came back to life. Let's come to Kenya. The late President Moi was fully submitted under the authority of his boss, President Jomo Kenyatta. Under very difficult circumstances, he was embarrassed, he was insulted. All manner of things were done to him. But he remained fully submitted under the authority of Jomo Kenyatta. And what happened? He became a president who carried more authority than Jomo Kenyatta. And yet Moe's character was meek. He was a meek man, very humble. Yeah. Jomo Kenyatta, you defied him, he canes you on the spot. <laughs> Moe, you defy him, he just looks at you. But because of this spiritual law, which is there forever, you can't change it. Moi not only carried more authority than Jomo Kenyatta, despite his character, but he also ruled for 24 years, compared to Jomo Kenyatta's 15. You can never run away from spiritual laws. Right, let's get back to politics proper, now that we understand Chris Kumekucha and where he's coming from, in all his analysis. And why some people say, Chris Kumekuche is always right. Some even try to call me a prophet. No, I'm nothing like that. All I do is pay careful attention to spiritual laws. Period. So we have a leader in UDA. The presidential candidate in UDA. Who not only has no regard for this very important spiritual law, but insults his boss while he's still in office. Because officially, William Samoy Ruto is still the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. And he insults directly the President of the Republic of Kenya. What do you think the spiritual implications are? Do you think he'll be able to do things his own way in defiance of spiritual laws? <laughs> yeah? Let me just leave it there. Now the other very important thing about rebellion is that if you are not properly under authority, if you rebel against your authority, others will rebel against your authority without fail. Let me give you a quick story. I know somebody who is very close to me. I've known them for years. Who used to rebel against his father. He was very rebellious. He defied his father several times. 
He even wanted to fight against his father, his biological father, his authority. At one time, he was being caned, and I believe even threw punches towards his dad. He defied his authority, and he finished school, went to university, got a very good job, became the CEO of a very huge Kenyan company. And at this point, many on this channel would have told me, you see Chris, those are just fairy tales you talk about. Nothing like that. Spiritual laws kitugani. And then things started to fall apart slowly. His children were very rebellious against him. He couldn't understand why. And then he lost his big job with this big corporation. Yeah, I believe the word that was used against him was insubordination, which has got everything to do with authority. That's why he lost his job. And he started struggling. This didn't happen immediately. He was flying high for almost 10 years. Yeah, perfect man, perfect family, perfect marriage, etc., etc. Then everything fell apart. You remember I told you, sometimes it takes time a certain period of time yeah, before things become clear and then he started struggling business after business failed and then his dear wife cheated on him yeah defied his authority you defy the authority of your husband and you give it to somebody else an outsider a handsome outsider what and you know in spiritual laws, there are many things you can never reverse. Or they are very difficult to reverse. Once it's done, it's done. You'll have to live with it. It is like living with a disease. Some people live better with a disease than others. For instance, the people with HIV AIDS, very many of them in Kenya. Many of them you'll never even know. Yeah. When a meza dawa kila siku, they're okay, they're doing everything. They even have spouses who are HIV negative. They're okay. Yeah. While others are in serious trouble. Others pass on. And so it is the same here. Yeah, but bottom line, you never get rid of some things, some mistakes you make spiritually. When you defy spiritual laws, what? Shariako. And so if I've just not been wasting time, if what I'm saying is the truth, in the event that the UDA candidate becomes our next president, what should we expect? We should expect a lot of rebellion amongst the UDA ranks. We should expect a lot of rebellion yeah, in the Kenya-Kwanza coalition. And indeed we're already seeing that. There's a huge fight over who's going to be deputy president which is threatening to rip apart the coalition and UD as a party. And that is not just my opinion. It is also the opinion of UD insiders. Yeah, check out what's on your screens right now. And I need to inform you that even if this information I've put on your screens right now is fake, it was photoshopped, I have a second source of information that confirms to me that this is the view of UDA insiders, that this situation linked to rebellion against the leader yeah, is threatening to rip the party apart. Bottom line, you can't ignore spiritual laws and get away with it. Just like you can't ignore the law of gravity and hope to get away with it. Never ever. And I'm not saying William Samuel Ruto's opponent is clean. No. Raila Odinga has also made his mistakes. He has also ignored spiritual laws. And he must live with the consequences. Which I believe are still unfolding. Yeah. And I will cover that in another video. But for now there's something very interesting to observe. We have William Samuel Ruto. Who was defiant and rebellious towards his authority, President Uru Kenyatta. He still is, because he goes around telling people, I made Uru Kenyatta president, thumping his chest. Yeah. If it wasn't for me, Uru Kenyatta would never have been president. 
And then we have another man called Raila Odinga, a giant politically, no matter what you think about him, no matter how much you hate him. Yeah. Who has submitted himself to the authority of Uhuru? So much so that people are calling Raila a Uhuru project. They're calling Raila a government project, which of course does not make sense. Yeah. There are some people who cannot be anybody's project. Let me just leave it at that. And instead, let me focus on my point. And so today, who carries more authority in the country? Is it the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, officially? Or is it a man called Raila Odinga? You tell me. Who carries more authority? Folks, you can't ignore spiritual laws. You can't. You can't. And so let me make some predictions. Some very bold, risky predictions. Yeah, that people will say, no, Chris, no, that can't happen. Let me make them. Based on my understanding of spiritual laws, there'll be rebellion in Timazimio. Oh, yes, expect that. Yeah. And it's because of the past of the presidential candidate, Raila Odinga. But then expect much more rebellion and chaos in UDA and the Kenya Kwanza coalition. And expect a lot more other problems yeah, based on what the leader has done in the past yeah, in defying spiritual laws. In other words, if UDA forms the next government, expect a very chaotic government. And in all likelihood, the leader will have to resort to draconian means yeah, to keep his ship afloat. Yeah, dictatorship, censoring of the press, jailing of journalists, yeah, and even persecution of media personalities and other people who oppose his regime. And if the other coalition, Azimio, forms the next government, it will not be plain sailing. Yeah, there will be some rebellion. But it will be a much more stable government than a UDA Kenya Kwanza government. That is my prediction. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekuchem.